Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the Talk Stalkers build. Part 1 was about the headwings and I strongly suggest that you watch it first. I am not going to expand on subjects that have already been treated in the previous video. To be honest, the large wings are quite similar to smaller ones, the main differences being the use of fabric instead of foam, the strapping system and the size as you might have noticed. Once again, this is not a tutorial. It's only a making of where I show what seemed to work in the situation. Here's the template. You can get it in my store, the link is in the description. If you already have the pattern from part one, you should have received a discount code for that one. I've also seen someone scale my head wing pattern up and alter it to make larger ones. So this is something you can try as well or just make your own, that's what I did after all. I'm cutting two layers of fabric per wing. This way I can get a different color on the front and back sides without having to paint it. You might have noticed that I'm actually making two pairs at the same time, a red one and a black one. Not because I was overly motivated that day, but because the persons who requested them want to go as a duo, Lilith and Morrigan. They are basically sponsoring the video, so thanks a lot. I often receive messages from people who want wings like this. I wasn't even supposed to make that kind of commission a second time after my first pair last year. I accepted that one because it was asked nicely and I also saw it as an opportunity to finally make the video people had been asking for. It's not that I don't like you, but this build is actually incredibly annoying and I would only do it again if Capcom were the one asking. I highly doubt they will. I'm saying this, but since things never seem to go according to plan, I might end up doing this a fourth time whilst complaining about doing it a fourth time. Don't listen to anything I say. I'm now sewing the layers together. The two layers of fabric have a completely different behavior. The pink one tends to stretch because of its texture, so I had to cut out some excess afterwards. The material itself is different, so the synthetic backside melts when heated, but the other side just burns. Whilst I could use a lighter to stop one from fraying, I had to use white glue on the other. Since we're talking about setting things on fire, here's a warning. Flames are a nice way of weathering fabric, but some are incredibly flammable and hard to extinguish, so please proceed with caution. The base of the wings is now ready. I'm cutting my pattern to only keep the skeleton, which will be made out of foam. I'm separating it in several pieces to avoid ending up with a mountain of scraps. I am now assembling everything with contact glue. The foam is 10 mm thick and it's low density in order to reduce the weight. After gluing, some parts ended up 2 cm thick. Since this isn't Minecraft, I cannot leave the skeleton like this. I have to make the sections round. I will use a rotary tool to get that shape. But first, I'm cutting bits of the material so I have less sanding to do later. Sometimes I do that with a scalpel, sometimes with scissors. Sanding takes a long time, but at least you see the results immediately. I can now assemble the sections. I'm doing it with hot glue, because it's practical. I have a new glue gun, by the way. The previous one died. I now have a very floppy wing. I have to give it a spine. This time I am making the bones out of aluminum pipe which will sit in the trench I just cut into the foam. I do not need as much support in the main finger as I do in the arm. So I am stopping here and finishing the job with steel wire which will make the wing less rigid and allow more movement.
I'm filling the empty space with hot glue. Time to assemble the foam and fabric. Now I'm sticking some foam clay to that thing, exactly like I did for the smaller wings. Watch part 1 for f I'm putting some on the edges as well to make the transition between foam and fabric look more organic. I am then polishing the shape with a rotary tool. Like I said in the previous video, I could have carved the extra volumes from foam sheets, but I have foam clay today so I am using it. I do not have footage of most of the airbrushing process because it got lost in the void, but you can refer to part 1 where I did the exact same thing with the exact same paint. Let's prime that thing. Once again, I'm using Flexbond and a rough brush to create some texture, but I am taking it even further by hitting it to get more bubbles on the surface. I won't say much about the paint job as I already covered the subject in part 1. I'm darkening the back a bit. Look at all these ladders! The cap I'm using lets off a very misty spray. It helps me control how much paint I am putting there. Let's move on to what most of you are here for, the attachments. The aluminum tube you see there slides into a slightly larger tube. And that's all. Thank you for watching. Okay, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that, but not much. The base of the harness is warbler. I am using it in this particular case because it does not have to take much strain. I am stacking two layers. Depending on what you are trying to make, this thermoplastic might be too fragile. Now the tubes. Having each wing slide into a tube means they can rotate inside. That's why they move like this. A lot of people thought the wings themselves were flexing. No, they were only moving inside their sockets. Back to the tubes. There is only one issue, diameter. The aluminum pipes I get have given diameters and they all fit inside one another. Except I do not want to use metal for the widest pipe. There would not be an issue if the pipes were vertical. They aren't vertical because I would need a very sharp angle here and I'm not sure the aluminum pipe could take it. So instead they're attached like this, which means that we have some effort here. Given the kind of movements the wings have, the outer tube ends up cutting into the inner tube unless everything is perfectly straight. Since I'm doing all this by hand, things might look straight, but usually aren't. To avoid damaging the wings on the long run, I decided to switch to PVC. Unfortunately, PVC pipes have a different set of diameters. So whilst a PVC pipe could fit into another PVC pipe, an aluminum pipe will not. I did not use PVC for the wing skeleton because it's not as rigid as I needed on smaller diameters. When I was at this step, hardware stores had already been closed because of the epidemic, so I had to rely on what I already owned. I made my PVC pipes larger by hitting them and sliding them on the aluminum tube. Before doing this, I wrapped a piece of tape around the smaller tube to make it wider and create an allowance. Now the inner diameter of the PVC pipe is slightly larger than the outer diameter of the aluminum tube, so the wing can slide easily inside and move freely. I'm attaching my new pipes to the rest with several layers of warbler again and some bolts and nuts.
the broken tip of my soldering iron is finally useful. I might trim the bolts later to prevent them from damaging the clothes. I am just fusing the edges together, don't mind me. The goal is to wear this under a t-shirt or a costume to make it look like the wings are actually part of your body. To achieve that, I need more pieces. I realize I've used three different rotary tools throughout this video. How I ended up with three of them does not matter, but at least you know that if you want to work with me, you won't have to bring your rotary tool or your ladder. I now have my missing pieces and they are supposed to go there. You can see that I curved the inside to leave space for the pipe. I'm going to use neodymium magnets that will connect through the clothes. I didn't film that, but I glued fabric on top afterwards to make sure they wouldn't go anywhere. I did that on the headband in part 1 as well. Now that I have this, I just have to cut two holes for the pipes. Where you put the straps is up to you. They could probably hold on their own in a tight garment like a corset. You can wear them on your hips. You can wear them on your back. You can wear several pairs at the same time and look absolutely ridiculous. The choice is yours. We are done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything and see you next time!